All right. Hey, guys. Welcome to the first back to school live Q&A of the semester. I am crazy excited to start this year off right to start this semester and help you guys out and just be able to see how can we get you the best grade that you guys of course want. <laughs> I'm happy to see that there we have let's see who we have actually in the chat. There's two Matt's actually. So there's Matt Eeks and then Matt Edward. Uh, Matt Edward is saying he's interested in the stream. He's taking Honors Chem 2. Awesome. And AP Chem as a full year course. Oh, wow. Uh, in high school right now. Okay. Way to go. <laughs> uh, not much working just on and you're working on anatomy and physio. My goodness. Okay. You go. Seriously. That is that is amazing what you're doing right now and working on all of that as well. Uh, and I also see um, Abina saying, hey, Melissa. And I have Nero saying, kippy. Awesome to see. I'm so happy to see you guys. Hello, everybody. Um, and thank you so much for being here for the back to school. Now, I wanted to talk about some of the most important study tips that personally helped me. And even, even now when I'm looking at after graduating, it's like it's like after you graduate or after you finish a class, you finally like understand the material or you realize you realize how you should have studied or should have done it before. Right. That that tends to happen to me all the time. Kind of like uh, if I'm in a conversation and I think of a joke or a witty remark, you know, I then think about that after, not during the moment. So that that happened to me several times. But Pretty much what I want to teach you guys and share with you are all the study tips that I personally wish I knew when I was in college or even in high school. So taking these difficult classes and how how it made it so much easier. So why don't we start this off? I see a lot of people joining in. I'm happy you guys are here. Thank you so much for uh, Sian, he says, hello. Uh, they say hello. And then Jamie says, hello. I just want to review. Totally getcha. Um, and... Someone else just said, I just joined. Hey, are you going to cover any equilibrium and ice tables at the moment? So at the moment, I am not going to be doing uh, any chemistry questions in this live stream. I will be going over study habits and study tips, any advice. And I would love to answer any of your guys' questions regarding, you know, proper study techniques or school advice. So that's what this live stream is about. But I definitely, you know, if you guys are looking for chemistry help, I will tell you guys how, towards the end, I will show you guys how we're actually going to be doing these new live Q&A formats. So uh, definitely stick around to that. Plus, I will be giving a discount code, a coupon code for my chemistry notes. So definitely stick around for that. So why don't we start off uh, with some study tips. And it's awesome to see everybody joining in now. I know Donna just said my study, my study habits are all over the place. Let's fix that. So why don't we start off with pretty much the most common one that you'll you'll see. Now, everyone says have a goal in mind. And I know that seems so cliche and everyone kind of kind of says, well, duh. You know, of course I I need to have some sort of goal in mind. You go to school having some sort of end result, something that you want to get out of it. Like for my example, I initially wanted to be a cosmetic dentist, uh, though I don't want to do that anymore, which is still crazy to think that I no longer want to do that, but Initially, when I was a chemistry major, that was my goal. And that's what I kept telling myself is I would always say personally, do it for the patient because I really loved dentistry and I still do. However, uh, YouTube is definitely a bigger passion right now. I absolutely love teaching you guys. So that's what I want you to think of. Have one goal in mind. Now, though, for me, it helped me understand um, why I was going to class. Like, why am I studying so hard? Why am I doing all of these things? And you'll see that some of the most successful people out there always have a why. So I've, I've seen so many different TED Talks and so many different videos just explaining how big and important having a why is. Um, and I completely agree. Like, if e even to think of it this way, I remember... I remember growing up, goodness, and my parents would always say, don't do that, right? And you would ask them why. Like like us as kids or us as people just wanted to know why. So if my parents actually gave me a 
good enough reason, not just because I said so, you know, then then I would actually understand that more and not want to do that. So that's kind of the idea behind this is having a why, having a goal in mind and knowing why you're going to class when you want to just hit the snooze button and fall back asleep. So that's one of the major things. Now, the next thing that I, I want you to think of when you're studying is don't multitask. At least personally, I found that whenever I multitask and I'm doing so many things at once, I end up making more mistakes. So I I can be, goodness, I can be trying to read one thing and then I'm answering something else and just, just overloading myself and something always gets looked over. Like I always end up making one mistake and sometimes it can be a big mistake. So that's why personally, I actually think the best way to to be able to actually knock down whatever goal or whatever you're trying to do is to only have one thing that you're focusing on. So what I personally do even now is, let's say, um, actually I did this yesterday, I was writing video scripts. And whenever I'm writing my own video scripts for for the YouTube videos, um, I like to put a timer. So I literally, I get my phone and I set a timer for about an hour or two hours, depending on how long I think it'll take. And I put my phone, like I kind of hide my phone. So I don't know if you guys have that same issue where um, those distractions, right? Uh, Phones, my phone personally, uh, I wouldn't say I'm addicted. My brother might, but I wouldn't say I'm addicted, but I might be a little bit. Uh, I love checking my Instagram I, I know, relatable, right? But but that's personally something that I have to hide behind my computer and know that, okay, it's out of sight, out of mind. I'm not going to touch that phone whatsoever. And I know someone just said it's, um, I go up in class, the larger the distractions. It's like the higher I go up in class, the larger the distractions. Exactly, exactly. So there, there will be more distractions. And that's why when you are studying, you want to eliminate as many distractions as possible. So for me, it would be my phone. Another thing could be, let's say, if you're a gamer, uh, I would say hide the the console, anything, the controller. That's the word. I'm clearly not a gamer. Um, but you can hide the, the controller, hide anything that might distract you. So that's personally what I do. The timer has absolutely saved my it's increased my productivity to the point where I'm just, I'm shocked that a simple timer could actually do that. So I definitely recommend having one goal in mind. So let's say I want to read the entire chapter, chapter one, okay, or even even a specific section. And I'm going to have that one goal in mind, then I'm going to set an hour for timer or whatever you think could work or however however it might take you. And I'm going to set that timer. Then I'm going to actually hide my phone, hide that distraction and just focus on and just focus on getting this done. Um, Just got a super chat. And thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Uh, Janet McNerma just says, just a thanks for helping me pass my test. You're very welcome. And congratulations. I'm so happy you passed your test. And I hope that we could we could keep passing all of our tests together and just passing chemistry because that's what this channel is all about, guys. That's what these live Q&As and everything that I personally do here is to help you pass chemistry. And the sole reason for this, and I just want to let you guys know a little bit of who I am and what I do, um, I didn't pass chemistry the first time around. And that is, that was really hard. (laughs) Like feeling that failure instantly when you're this 18 year old in college and you're just starting off and and to kind of give you an idea in high school, I was, I pretty much got all straight A's and I was, I found it easy. But then when I went to college, I didn't feel that way. I actually felt like I kept falling behind and I just wasn't getting it. And I understand what it's like to fail a lot (laughs) and make a lot of mistakes with my academics. And that's exactly why I created this channel to help you avoid those mistakes and to be that guide because personally, I didn't have that resource. I didn't have a guide, unfortunately, or someone to just ask for help. Um, Whenever I would go to my teachers or counselors or even my peers, I wouldn't always receive the the help that I wanted or needed. So I completely understand what it's like to not know what to do, you know, to feel that you're you're being challenged and to just feel overwhelmed. 
And that's exactly why I'm trying to do my absolute best to help you guys relieve that stress, to understand what it's like to just what you should do to succeed is what I'm trying to say. And the things that I absolutely wish I would have known, and I want to save you guys the time, the money, because it's expensive to fail or not pass a class and have to retake it all over again. And of course, just the headache. Like a lot of times if we fail so many times, we then want to give up on our dreams, right? We want, we then just want to say, forget this. Maybe I'm not cut out for this. And I don't want you to feel that way at all because I have too many times and I've cried it too many times and <laughs> understand that I understand that feeling too much. But yeah, so the next thing I want to kind of see what else everyone's saying. Uh, I see that someone's saying, I hope you... Uh, I hope you start an organic chemistry segment. That was a challenge for me. I actually started, I just launched my new organic chemistry channel, which I'm super excited about. I just started that, yeah. So I'll put that in the, the chat right now. I'll put the link to the channel. I just started that Wednesday, actually. Yeah, it's been a big week. <laughs> Wednesday, I just launched my new organic chemistry channel and I will be posting uh, every single week a new video to help you guys out with Ochem, which I'm crazy excited to show you what I have, you know, going for you guys. Uh, oh, Mike, Mike likes science. Hey, Mike, what's up? Happy you're here. Um, and who else do we have? Leanne says, I'm taking organic chem in the fall. What would you recommend when studying? Perfect. Well, I would recommend checking out the organic chemistry channel for this reason. I actually did an intro to, or, or pretty much a general chemistry review for organic chemistry, because a lot of times we end up forgetting everything we learned from um, after summer, right? At least that's how I felt. So it's just a basic review of what you need to remember from general chemistry for organic chemistry. I also will be doing an organic chemistry introduction. So then you'll, you'll get a feel of what's to come and what you, what you have to understand. A lot of times with, at least for OCHEM, uh, they don't really translate every single little symbol or detail, and it is kind of like a new language. So that's why I'm doing an organic chemistry introduction so I can be that translator and tell you what you need to look out for and what you need to know. So definitely look out for that. But for now, I definitely recommend uh, checking out the link that I just put in the description for the OCHEM channel. Let's see what else everyone else is saying. Uh Let's see, Matt just said, I used some videos, including yours, to help me with my summer assignment, which was my first test, and I got a 90. Nice. Um, a five on an, wow, okay. A five on an AP test. Congratulations. That That is difficult to do. Wow. Uh, Neelam is saying, I failed chemistry last semester, and now I'm taking it again. I don't feel good enough for, for pre-med anymore. All right, let's talk about that. So I felt the same way. Uh, the first time around, goodness, I failed. I didn't pass all my classes. And and that I know that may seem shocking now that I'm a chemistry tutor, but I can tell you guys, and I and I want to tell you guys that. I want to be real and just let you know, and I'm always being real with you guys, um, that I didn't pass chemistry the first time around. I had to retake several of my classes. And I had that same mentality. I felt, you know, maybe I'm just not cut out for it. Maybe I can't be what I dream of being. And unfortunately, all my teachers and counselors told me the same thing. Um, they told me to change my major, and that was really hard to hear. But, but the thing is, is this. They didn't know what – they didn't really know me, right? And, and that, that's personally how I felt. I didn't feel that my teachers fully knew me or my counselors. And I want you to think about, do you truly know that you can do this? And, and, and if right now you're feeling like, well, I'm not sure, do you want this? That's the biggest thing. Understanding your why, once again, is the biggest thing to know, guys. So do you want to be a doctor or, you know, go towards pre-med, which I'm assuming you want to be some sort of doctor or health professional? Now, if you truly know that that's what you want, that's what you're passionate about, don't give up. Don't, don't allow one class or even three classes, not doing well in three classes, stop you altogether. And... The thing is, is this, a lot of times um, our professors are teaching us something and and I remember actually my OCHEM professor saying, why don't you guys get this? And he got his master's and PhD in organic chemistry. Now that took about 
three to four years, if not more, to actually get that degree. So they expect you to learn this in three months. So that's kind of what I've seen. I'm just like, you know, it's if I don't pass the first time around, and obviously I want to prevent you guys from from dealing with that or, or you know, feeling that. But even if you have to take it again, it doesn't mean you're a failure. It just means, you know what? What do we have to do to not have this happen again? Maybe you needed some more time with the material. It does not mean you're stupid because that's personally how I felt and I believed it for quite some time. So that does not mean that at all, guys. Instead, just see it as what can I do differently? What can I do differently this time around to pass this class and not have to worry about taking it again? And once you learn those steps, how you study, how you learn, then it makes it so much easier to go into any class, not just chemistry. Because I know that a lot of you guys are doing, you know, some sort of science degree, or even if you're not, all these study tips that I'm going over are going to be beneficial for sure for school, as well as even graduate school or when you're done with school. So I hope that you guys are always learning and I I am passionate about learning now, though at the time when I was in school, I wasn't always. And, and I say it this way, sometimes it felt like a chore. And it's just because I had so many assignments, I had so many books to read, so many things that I just felt overwhelmed with. And when I was done with that, or when I wasn't in school, I stopped learning. And I didn't want to learn. And, it, and it, it's it's sad to kind of see that. And then now looking back after I've graduated and all this, that that wasn't the correct mentality or approach to it. Instead, I can I can see it now and, and think about it as we should always be improving the skills that we need and we want to improve. You know, so something else that I want to mention um, with the study tips, and if you guys are are starting school, which I see someone said they're starting school tomorrow, um, and it's going to be your first chemistry class ever, these tips will definitely help you to stay ahead or at least not fall behind. So the next thing that, you know, I talked about having a goal and having one goal in mind um, and being being very specific about that goal. Like, let's say if you guys wanted to study for an hour, make sure you write down what you want to study, okay? So so what I basically want you guys to, to know is consistency is one of the biggest things to success in general. And, and I, I would actually say that's one of the biggest secrets to success and in, like in just that's the main one. That's like the major, um, the major thing to know is consistency. So people, and I can think about it back to athletes. If, if you want to be this pro athlete, then you're constantly practicing and you're constantly at the gym and constantly working out. If you want to be this, um, you know, amazing doctor or chemist or science person or professional, then you're constantly reading and constantly understanding and trying to learn new concepts and dive deeper into the material. So consistency could even just be if you're doing this once for an hour every single day. So what I recommend and what I wish I did was Every single day, even on the weekends, is at least study for an hour, okay? And that's minimum. That's minimum, depending on how many classes you guys are taking. But at least for chemistry, I recommend just doing that for at least an hour and and having that kind of like that, sim- that timer set and having that one goal in mind. So that's something that I highly, highly recommend is consistency. Um, I could also see someone had a question, which I can answer that, Um they're saying, Roy is saying in chemistry, do you have to memorize all the conversion factors? Like, would they be available to use on a major test or would they just be helpful to know? So from my experience and from all of my students' experience as well that I tutored, um, they all had to memorize the conversion factors, unfortunately, but it does depend on your teacher. So that's something that I would ask. Let them know, ask them and see, will this be given on the exam or is this something that you have to just memorize and know? A lot of times for it was conversion factors, it was also uh, polyatomic ions. Those you had to have memorized, uh, same with charges. So those certain things that I remember being like just something that you had to have memorized. And then to 
the best way to memorize those types is for me was always writing it down. So that, that's actually a great tip now, and, and I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, for everybody who's asking about memorization tips or tricks with all that, I highly recommend writing it over and over. So I personally didn't like flashcards. Um, I feel that flashcards are best used for vocabulary, but not for like mathematical things, you know, like constants or conversion factors or even polyatomic ions. If you learn that way, then that's fine. But personally, it just didn't work for me. And I haven't really seen that that's worked for students. Um, what I recommend to remember this is to get a blank piece of paper and for your conversion factors, uh, literally write them over and over and over and until you can just recite them by memory. And then I would do that pretty much as long as it took me. I would even do that every single day, just making sure I were to rewrite this over and over. And then now for polyatomic ions, what I would always do was I would also write them all down over and over, but I would rearrange them in the order of um, increasing, uh, what was it, charges. So the charges. So I would do, okay, everything that has a plus one charge is here. Everything that has a, you know, one minus charge is then following and so on. So that really helped me to understand everything. So yeah, I highly recommend that. And uh, something else, guys, if you haven't downloaded your, um, the, what do I have? The survival guide. So if you haven't downloaded the free chemistry survival guide for both chemistry one or and two, um, I highly recommend doing so. That's in the description box of this video. So make sure to click that and download that. That is completely free. That is my gift to you because I know what it's like to flip around through your notes and flip through your book and not find the formula that you need. So I put all of those together so you don't have to stress about that. And Kim just said, uh, your videos are so helpful. I didn't see anything about finding density of an unknown substance compared to the density of water at 25 degrees. Uh, do you have a video on that? Um, I don't think I have a specific, I have a video on density, but I don't think I have a video comparing another density. Um, let me read that again just to see about finding density of an unknown substance compared to the density of water at 25 degrees. I don't have one on that, unfortunately, but I do have one on density. I can see, I do recommend we be typing that in the, in Google search if you can and seeing what you can do with that. Um, if not, I can see what else I can find. But yeah, I, I don't, unfortunately. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Scan just said, my lecturer told me to transfer to a different course, but I was like, nah. <laughs> now I got the highest percentage in the history of the college for applied biology first year courses. <laughs> Nicely done. Exactly. And, and OK, like that is a beautiful representation, by the way, of, of a lot of times professors doubt you. Um, and I'm not saying all of them. I've had my own experiences and I've had I've had really good professors and unfortunately I've had several bad ones. Um, but that is a great representation of they just don't know you. You know, and a lot of times these struggles and people doubting you actually forces you to to prove them wrong and even to prove yourself that you can prove to yourself that you can do this and that you are you are capable. You know, so that that's something that I I highly recommend for you guys with that um, is is if a professor or a counselor or really anyone tells you and starts to doubt you, just ignore it. Like and as as I know it's easier said than done, but look at it this way: you are the only one that can do this. So if they're not on your side, so be it. You need to be on your own side. So you're the one that's going to be taking this class. And ultimately, you need to focus on that goal and focus and see that you do have the potential. You know, each and every single one of us does have the potential to pass chemistry or to succeed. So I know that everybody's success is going to be different and everyone's definition of success is different. But you're the one to define what success is, which is kind of the beauty of it. Um, and I have Pamela saying, hi, Melissa, thank you for the videos you make. It has helped me a lot in chemistry and helped me pass chemistry. I'm going to school next week and I'm starting biology. Congratulations. I'm happy. I'm really happy that you passed chemistry and that I can help you out with that. And let's see, we have, uh, Neil, I'm saying, oh, shit, I, I mixed, I mixed one and I, 
missed one. No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, do you have any advice on building discipline? Yeah. Uh, where to get started with that? Yes, I do. So I was talking about how to not fall behind and consistency is something that's major. The other thing that I actually created for you guys was something called a study checklist. So a lot of times there's so much information that is, you know, being like presented to you guys and you don't know where to start. You don't know, you know, is this going to be on the exam or what should I actually write down? What should I study for? And you end up reading the entire book and it's just too much information that you didn't need to read the entire book. So that's why I personally did, uh, I made a study checklist and let me see if I can put that on the screen right now. But um, the study checklist, there we go. So the study checklist, this is an example of one of them. You could find them in the description box of this video um, and in really every single video, but they're completely free. So I made a study checklist for both chemistry one and chemistry two. So what this is and how to use this is, let's say you're studying, um, you're studying for significant figures and dimensional analysis, and um, you don't know what you need to know. And that's a common thing, right? You have no idea where to start, what to do, what should I, you know, what questions should I ask? Um, and I did that all for you guys already, so you wouldn't have to worry about it because, quite frankly, there's enough that you guys have to worry about. So all of these different checklists are pretty much telling you what you should know, what you should study. So, like, for this example, it says significant figures. What are the rules? So make sure when you're studying that you're actually writing down what all the rules are, what you need to know uh, for, like, let's say the next part. What are the rules when multiplying or dividing? What are the rules for adding or subtracting? And it goes, and the list goes on with that. So every single one of these checklists is based on, um, actually, I've gotten this question before, was how do I base this off of? So I look at uh, different chemistry books. And as well as my own experience with my students and my own personal experience when I was taking chemistry. And I've just seen um, how many like exams have the same thing. So a lot of professors and teachers everywhere around the world use the same sort of questions. So they might change up the numbers or really they're asking for the same thing or same sort of style of question. So that's what I've based uh, these study checklists on, is what I've seen on most exams and most exam questions. Same goes for my notes. So if you guys aren't familiar, I have chemistry notes that uh, they're pretty much how-to guides on how to do specific chemistry topics. So I do have one on sig figs, on significant figures, and, um, and dimensional analysis. So... I, I definitely like to create those types of notes for you guys to make it easier for you since I understand what it's like to not know where to start. And even like using these checklists, these checklists are pretty much all answered in the notes and have really, really detailed examples all laid out. There's like 20 to 30 pages plus and so on. And once again, you can check out those chemistry notes uh, in the description box. So I want to keep going with this, but that's to answer Neelam's question on where do you get started? Well, use these study checklists. When you're studying, um, when you're studying for any specific topic, even actually, this is something that I always recommend. Um, I recommend if you can, if you're just about to start school or if you have the possibility of being ahead of the game, please, please do so. And that is actually how you get an A in chemistry. Okay. So staying staying ahead of the class or, or even if you're just keeping up with it. So most people who end up not passing are the ones that fall behind or the ones that get a lower grade are the ones that fall behind. And I tell you that from experience. So I... I pretty much didn't understand like the previous section or the previous chapter that the professor like just taught on. And then and then by the time I understood that we then changed topics completely and are on, on something completely different. So it does speed up really, really fast after the first week. Um, it starts to pick up. And what I highly recommend doing is studying right now. So already starting on the first day. Okay, so that's what I highly recommend is to just keep studying every single day, build that consistency. And um, something else that I want to mention to you guys is a lot of times we feel that um, 
like we have to get into the study mode or we have to feel like studying, you know, and and I even sometimes get that feeling like, oh, I don't I don't feel like doing this today. I don't and I'll be real with you guys. I don't always feel like going to the gym sometimes, though. I know I should. Um, <laughs> I would rather just eat ice cream. But <laughs> But I know that I need to go to the gym and eat healthy or I need to study or do this certain thing. But unfortunately, we don't always have that motivation. And sometimes I feel like I have that motivation the night before, but then the morning I'm like, no, no, I just want to fall asleep. I just want to sleep. But (laughs) instead, what I want you guys to remove from your vocabulary is the whole concept or that whole mentality really of I don't feel like it. I don't feel like doing this. Once you say that in your mind – it's done. You're not going to be productive. So instead, what I want you to look at is even if you don't finish the your assignment completely or even if you don't read the entire chapter or do everything that you want at that moment, instead, just say, I'm going to open my book. I'm going to start. And that's the biggest thing. So instead of saying, I don't feel like it, just say, I'm going to start. I'm going to do something. I'm going to sit here, time myself and just start. And that's another beautiful thing about the timer is it forces you to not second guess yourself like, uh, I don't know, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go on Instagram, go on YouTube. Um, and really what the timer does is it forces you to start, which I actually need that extra push. So that's something that I highly recommend, pushing that that timer. And that already kind of tells you and makes you commit. All right, I'm going to commit to this for an hour and just start. So definitely removing that I don't feel like doing this mentality is going to push you and just drive you to that. Another thing that I actually started doing and I highly recommend is um, a lot of times we we feel that way, right? We feel that, oh, I don't want to, I don't feel like doing this. I don't have the motivation. You know, maybe, maybe I'll have the motivation tomorrow and I'll just wait. So instead, what I want you guys to think of is if you want to be a doctor, if you want to be a dentist or some sort of professional, whoever that person or that um, dream that you have, that dream person that you personally want to be, are do they have that same mentality? So do does that person, does that successful person have the mentality of, oh, I just don't feel like it today? So and, and like knowing and understanding like that mentality and saying, if I want to be the successful person, do they have the mentality of saying, I don't feel like doing this? I don't have the motivation. Probably not. So that's what I highly recommend to just kind of think of and get into that mindset when you're studying and building that discipline. Uh, Let me answer some more questions that you guys had. Um, Let's see. So Roy said, I tried to stay ahead by studying this summer. Awesome. Before school started, but I still really slow at the metric conversions and stuff. I'm scared that I'm going to fall behind since it's an honors class. Okay. So I don't know if you've checked out some of the um, videos that I, I had, which I can put in the description. I'm sorry, put in the chat right now. Um, it was one of my older videos, one of my starting videos, which was uh, the metric system. So it was, I believe it, what was it called? Dimensional analysis, no, unit conversion with the metric system or something like that. But I can put that in the, the chat right now. I highly recommend watching that. I also had practice problems at the end that you can try. Uh, and I believe I also might have some of them in the description box as well. I, I definitely recommend giving those a try and just keep practicing those types. Um, that will help you with the metric system specifically. And then any more conversion factors. I actually just created a new playlist or a new um, three new videos on unit conversions. And I updated that. So I am excited to show you guys. I think it was called something with the metric system. If not, then, or sorry, something with unit conversion. If not, I believe it was just the video. It's perfect, I did. So I'll put that in the the chat right now. Highly recommend that for everybody who's going to be doing unit conversions. Uh, That tends to be the first thing that people have uh, trouble with. And and it's just because you don't really know how to align the conversion factors and and how everything cancels out. So I highly, highly recommend watching that playlist, unit conversions playlist, where I go over how to set everything up. Um, And let's see what else everyone else is saying. Nomenclature. Yes. Okay. So uh, Neelam is saying nomenclature is the worst. I can never grasp it. Let's fix that. So I also have a a video, I don't know if you've seen that one before too, where I go over in detail every single different type of um, 
pretty much bond or, or type of compound that you might have to name. So I'll, I'll definitely put that in the chat, just my typical naming compounds video. Highly, highly recommend it. And I will be uh, making another one, another naming uh, compounds video, I believe, very soon. I'm working on that script. Um, actually, I just finished that script. So I will be working on that as well. But I'll put that in the chat. Highly recommend with naming compounds. Now, the, the biggest thing with nomenclature um, in general is just to understand the different types. So for everyone who's saying that they're not understanding naming compounds, um, knowing that there's two different types that ionic compounds, which have a metal and a non-metal, uh, those are going to have certain rules. And like the main, main rule that I want you to know is that one, there will be a metal and a non-metal. So that's completely different from covalent, um, covalent bonds. And for ionic, what the key difference here is that you're going to have to balance out the charges. So you will be doing like different subscripts or putting different subscripts to make sure that the charges are the same versus covalent compounds. You never balance the charges whatsoever because those consist of two nonmetals. So instead you'll be using prefixes. So knowing that like two different you know differences, that's going to help you so much just to be able to break it apart and pretty much do that outline and do that sort of to understand, all right, where do I start with this problem? Because I think that's the biggest thing in general with chemistry is looking at a problem, staring at it and being like, what? Where do I start? What is this saying? What do I do? You know, because there are so many little rules and little factors. So in that video, I made sure to uh, go over everything that you'll need to know uh, for that. So, yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, I want to get to... Okay. <laughs> so, we'll see. Oh, and then I'm, I'm actually going to get to the discount that I mentioned for my notes uh, towards the end. All right. So, I'll be releasing... I'll be letting you guys know the discount code... Uh, that you can put to get 25% off of the chemistry notes uh, towards the end. So I had another question, or let's see. Yeah, Melissa is saying, hi, Melissa. Um, I'm struggling. I feel like no one really uh, taught this. I've been with my boyfriend for five years, or talks about this. I've been with my boyfriend for five years, and my classes are getting harder. So I was wondering, how do I balance relationships and school life? Yes. So... Uh, relationships. So I, I applaud you for being with your boyfriend for so long. That's not an easy thing to do. Um, no, people people don't really talk about this. So balancing relationships and school life. I would say since you have been with your boyfriend for so long, and um, by now you know he understands what you what you want out of life. I, I would hope. And and I what I recommend with this is letting him know that you aren't always going to be able to go out as much. So th this is something where um, my own previous relationships, uh, I remember we spoke about. And we, we said, okay, well, this is our goal right now in school, and this is very important. And stressing that importance to your significant other is, to me, is extremely important because, and even your family or even your friends, just letting them know that, you know, right now my mission and my goal is to graduate or is to pass this class and it is going to require a lot of time so making kind of a, a schedule and it is something really important to do and unfortunately you're not going to be able to spend as much time with your significant other as you would like you know maybe not every day or even every week so i mean definitely i know that you can still you know keep constantly talk but having them understand that you're going to need to take some time to study and to um, prepare for exams and whatnot is something that I would say have that conversation. A lot of times people don't have that conversation and um, miscommunication is one of the biggest things that uh, occurs with relationships that can cause them to uh, break or just not be as strong. So that's what I would say with relationships. Another thing too, this this goes not only for a romantic, rela romantic uh, relationship, but it could also be with friendships and even family members. So I remember with my friends, um, I would have to say, even even to this day, you know, I'm, I'm a very busy person, but sometimes I have to say, I won't be able to see you guys for 
three months or I won't be able to see you guys for this amount of time just because I'm really going to be involved in school or working on this and know that I still love you guys and I still care for you. But uh, it's just me really trying to not overwhelm myself or stress myself. So that's something to kind of talk about. So yeah, definitely having that. Maybe if you guys wanted to do um, a date night or whatnot, uh, kind of not do that every single week, but instead maybe once a month and look at your exams first and schedule that first and make sure that you have enough time to study and then kind of treat that as a reward because you did so well. Now you can enjoy the time with your significant other or your friends and family. So I hope that helps with that, Melissa. Uh, Neelam is saying, how do you deal with a bad professor? Okay. So <laughs> that's something that that's I've dealt with too many times. Um, how do you deal with a bad professor? So a lot of times when we want to ask for help, right, um, determining who we can ask, who we can ask is one of the biggest things. So if you if you can't get a tutor, which I understand, um, or if a lot of times we actually in colleges they have free tutoring centers, which I highly recommend checking out. Um, and if they have great tutors, I know that sometimes some of them are good, some of them aren't, but definitely give that a try. But how to deal with a bad professor? Um, if there's no way around it, if there's no way that you can change your professor or um, just pick a different one because I've had to pick a different one or uh, I remember a lot of my classes just that was the only professor teaching the class and I had no choice. So what I did instead was I made sure to get a tutor um, or at least attempt to, to get some sort of tutor. I remember this was for organic chemistry. Actually, I did get a tutor and I constantly was going to that tutor. Not only that, I made friendships in class and we made a study group. And that's something else to kind of talk about is with study groups, sometimes they're not always the best. And I, I tell you that because, you know, I didn't always like to choose my close, close friends or people that I always like to chat with because we wouldn't get anything done. We'd always want to talk. So instead, I would rather pick someone who really is focused on just studying and wanting to get this done. So that's like being strategic as to who you pick in your study group. So that's something that I would recommend to to deal with a bad professor. Um, another thing that I, I want to mention is what happens, I've gotten this question before and I've, I've actually dealt with it, what happens if, if your professor doesn't like you? Like, like sometimes you feel that way, you know, you get that vibe and maybe it's just, maybe my professor just doesn't like me. And I remember feeling that way with one of my professors. I felt that for some strange reason, I don't know what I did. You know, they just didn't seem to like me. And maybe I reminded them of somebody. I don't know. You know, I didn't know their situation. But what I did instead was I still showed up. You know, I showed up to class. I got a tutor. I worked really hard. And I ended up doing very well in the class. But ultimately, that's kind of how I, I treated it. I was always kind and polite um, to the professor. So that's something to definitely watch out for is um, if they are a bad professor, still be polite, still be kind. And um, I'd say worst case scenario, let's say if they're not being fair with, with um, their grading or something is just going horribly, horribly wrong. I remember that I had a professor, actually, I had a student that had a professor that was putting things on the exam that he never taught. And um, I remember that she would always go to the professor saying, you didn't teach this, this wasn't in the curriculum, and he just didn't care, unfortunately. So the last result that I would say is going to the department and letting them know what's going on. However, you would need your class to back you up. So at least a handful of people to also let them know what's going on. So that's something that I would say uh, that's the last resort. And Parker is saying, how do you know all the elements from the symbols? Um, practice. So even I, to this day, don't know absolutely every single one on the periodic table. I know a lot of them, but that was just because of, of practice. So what I would say to do is, once again, just write them down. So know, know the top ones. So know the ones that are in the major groups, like group one, two, um, and pretty much honestly all of them the the only thing that I, I would say the transitional metals you don't have to know every single one of them sometimes even your professor will give you a list that you'll have to know or or look at the ones that I would say to to really focus on are the ones that don't seem to be 
Like, it doesn't make sense why the symbol would be that. For example, um, gold, the symbol is AU. Why? Who chose it? I don't know. <laughs> like, why did they do that to us? And same with iron. Like, iron iron is FE. How does that – why couldn't it have been IR, you know? So certain things like that, I would say those sort of things are, are something to remember. Um, yeah, so – I would kind of say with those types, like even PB that was lead, um, AG that's silver, those different types that really don't seem to, you know, fit or at least like they don't connect like with lithium, that's LI that works, you know, so carbon, that's C and and so on. And Matt is saying to know elements uh, is constant use and other names like ferrous is iron and take Latin. Yeah, Latin. Yeah. So a lot of these were based off of Latin, but uh most of us don't know Latin, right? So, which I kind of interesting to see how much Latin actually does connect with science once you take more science classes. So it's kind of cool. Um, but that's what I would say to do. Just write them down and look at the ones that focus on the ones that don't seem to be that name, like like lead, like PB and so on, if you, if you get what I'm saying there. Um, but yeah, so that, that was a great question. I'm glad you you asked that. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention was for the asking for help part was devising a system for when to ask for help. So a lot of times, and, and I even personally um, dealt with this, was when in the world do you ask for help? You know, like sometimes I've seen students that if they haven't, you know, studied the material yet or haven't um, attempted the problem yet, they'll instantly ask for help. And I did that, I'll admit. Um, but personally, I don't think that that's the best way to learn. So I would say at least spend 15 minutes, at least, trying that question out on your own. Okay, so 15, 20 minutes, uh, trying that out on your own. And if you really, really can't understand it, you've looked at YouTube videos, hopefully mine, and, or, or others, of course. Um, you've looked at, you know, your book. You've looked at everything that you could possibly find in your notes. Then if you absolutely can't figure it out, then figure out who can you ask. So that's, that's another thing. So if you, if you can't ask your teacher, or if you can, great, um, then have another option. Maybe you have a classmate who understands chemistry a bit more. Maybe you have... Um, a tutor, or there's an online, or sorry, or there's a free tutoring that you might have in college, set up a time for that. So that's kind of the system that I highly recommend. Don't be shy to, I, I don't want you guys not to ask for help, because that that's the biggest thing. You know, if you want to succeed, you're going to have to ask for help here and there, okay? So now with asking for help um, and going into more of like how to study and, and whatnot, I want to tell you guys about the chemistry notes that I make and I design and kind of the whole reason how or why I design them and how I design them design them is these chemistry notes are what I wished I had in school. So a lot of times the book is way too confusing, right? It's it's meant for a chemist, not meant for and it's not meant for someone who's just learning chemistry. So they don't design the book for the student, they design it for other chemists, as sad as that is. So what I did already with my notes is I translated it and I put all the information that you need to know for that specific topic um, into the notes. And uh, I, I don't know if you guys have seen my notes before, but one of the major things that I've, I've made them for and um, the reason why I've actually put them at a very, very low price um, is because I understand what it's like to uh, be to not have the financial support as much, um, as well as um, just just not wanting to pay f a huge amount for tutoring because it can be very expensive. I personally know because I was a private tutor, so that's why I designed these notes because I want you guys to be successful and as well not have to you know break the bank with that. So. The reason why I've, I've created also these notes, um, someone just asked, is it good for AP Chemistry? Yes, it is. So this, all these notes are good for Chemistry 1, whether it's high school or college. It's also good for AP Chemistry. And uh, as well, I'm starting to add uh, Chemistry 2 on there. So I believe I have one on there for Chemistry 2. It was acids and bases. So these are definitely good for that. Um, another thing with these notes is I make sure to go into extreme detail. So a lot of times with tutoring sessions, um, I can answer a lot of questions, sure. Like, and I want you to think of this as 
this is back when I was doing my one-on-one -on -one tutoring, I could answer so many questions. And students would take notes, but a lot of times you would still miss something, right? So think of it as these notes are pretty much you taking me, you know, in, in into your notebook or whatnot, you know? So it's, it's basically whatever I'm saying, and it's actually my own personal notes designed for you so that you don't miss anything. So that's the beauty of it. I personally believe that these notes are, goodness, five tutoring sessions worth because of how much is in there jam-packed and there's even common test ex like questions that I put there. So yeah, definitely check those guys th that out. Uh, the link is in the description box of this video and I wanted to get to the discount code. So I want you guys to succeed this semester. I want you to not only pass, but do the best you have ever done um, and can do. So the discount code is back to school. So you'll get 25% off all, and I mean all of my chemistry notes. So uh, I'll put the link to the chemistry notes right now in the chat. And like I said, that is 25% off of every single one of the chemistry notes. This is going to be up until September 16th. So this, uh, it expires September 16th. Uh, you can just put the, after you add it to cart, it'll state, um, the actual use apply coupon code, I believe. And then you can just put the coupon code of back to school. So yeah, that will be the discount code that you can use. Once again, it's 25% off. I highly, highly recommend them. Um, when I was talking to other students who actually purchased the notes, they told me that this cut their studying in half. And that's exactly what they're designed for. So they're designed for you to not have to read the book and spend so many hours frustrated and not, under, you know, when you're, you're pretty much not understanding it, I understand that part. Um, these notes are designed for you to cut your studying time in half and just get to the main things that will be on the exam. So that's definitely one of the big things. Um, let me see if I had anyone else ask questions. Uh, it took me two weeks to understand sig figs. Then I found this channel. It's really great that it explains it so simply and precisely. Thank you. I'm so happy about that. Perfect. I'm really glad that you got that down now. And yes, that's exactly also what the, the videos are designed for, are to shorten your study time <laughs> and just focus on what you need. So I'm really happy about that. Um, and let's see anything else there. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about. So we were talking about asking for help, right? And I want to be that resource for you guys. So with these Q and A's, I know I'm not answering chemistry questions today, but I will be. So next Sunday, I will be doing another live Q and A, and this is going to be the format. So I want to hear your guys's, uh, your guys's questions. Okay. So I want to answer your guys's questions. And instead of, I don't know if you guys are familiar with my last um, Q and A style, where it was kind of like a free for all, and everyone was just putting all different types of questions, doesn't matter, you know, it didn't matter what topic it was for chemistry. They were just <laughs> going one by one. And as much as I, you know, I, I know that that was helpful for a lot of people. I also know that it, it was kind of difficult because everyone was in different places. And I really want to have one Q&A focusing on, let's say, three topics. Um, and so you guys can actually get a better understanding of that specific topic rather than just putting everything in one in one and having so many different things going on. So to help with that, um, the new format is going to be this. We're going to use Twitter. So um, what you would do is you would write, so you'd tweet me, you would write or take a picture of your chemistry question and you would tweet me at hello Melissa M. Um, and put this hashtag of uh, hashtag Ask Melissa Maribel. So that's what you would do for for getting your questions answered. So how this is going to work is you would send in your question right on Twitter, and then I'm going to look and review all of the different questions. Um, and essentially what's going to happen is I'm going to pick three different topics and it's going to be based on all the questions that I'm getting. So if I see that a lot of the questions are on naming compounds, then I'm going to focus um, th that next live Q&A on naming compounds. And then I'll have those questions answered there. So the nice thing about getting the questions ahead of time is, is that I actually get to answer more questions. So 
at the the last Q and A's that I was doing, where I had to answer the question on the spot, that took a little bit longer just because I had to figure out the question, and I had to you know plug everything into my calculator, write it down, and that's just extra time that I want to use to answer more questions and help you guys out more. So that way, if I got the questions ahead of time, I could have those already done and we could answer even more questions, which is what I wanna do. So if you guys don't have a Twitter, I highly recommend activating it or making one. And like I said, how it's gonna work, you could even do that right now if you have a chemistry question and I would answer it for the following Sunday, but throughout this entire week, please write and take a picture of your chemistry question or the chemistry topic that you want to go over um, and tweet me at hello Melissa M as you can see on the screen and put the hashtag of ask Melissa Maribel. Uh, I say this because it just that hashtag is going to make it a lot easier for me to answer your question and to um, just see it. So your questions will help me pick the topic that I will be covering um, in the next Sunday live Q&A. And like I said, if I see a lot of the same questions on like the specific topic of naming compounds or stoichiometry or sig figs, then I will be covering that topic on on the next, on the following Q&A. So I won't be able to answer them all. I know that. But thanks to this kind of new format, I will be able to answer a lot more questions. So yeah, I hope it does. Anyone have any questions? Um, regarding anything else on maybe the format or the notes or whatnot or of anything, let me know. But that's the new format. I'm excited to start it off and to use Twitter to, you know, to integrate that and, and get more of your guys' questions answered, which is a huge goal of mine. And I know, um, I know I can't answer them all, but I at least can answer more <laughs> or try to try my best to answer more. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. I think everyone else, I don't know if I answered everyone else's questions, but I can I can see. Um, as we're wrapping up, thank you. Actually, um, make sure to follow me also on Twitter uh, if you haven't already. Uh, that makes it a lot easier to answer, to actually tweet me and ask a question um, and know, you know where to tweet me and whatnot. And I'll, I'll be announcing again how to do this process. Uh, throughout the week. So yeah, definitely let me know your guys' questions. I'm so happy that you joined me. Thank you so much for being here. And I I can't wait for next Sunday um, to actually start answering more chemistry questions and getting this going. Uh, and then as you can, you guys can actually tell, I release a video every single Monday. So look out for that tomorrow. I will be releasing another video on Monday. And like I said, if you guys haven't seen um, if you guys haven't seen the Organic Chemistry channel, make sure to check that out as well. That is new. And if you have anyone that's taking organic chemistry, please send them that way so that they can pass chemistry as or organic chemistry as well. So yeah, uh, Matt says, thanks for the stream. I will possibly submit questions for Sunday. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for being here. And I wish you an awesome Sunday. And I'll see you next Sunday. See you guys.